Look what I have. Earth fault. Let's find where the problem is coming from. Let's look for the source of the earth fault. There's the main board. We're going to... This is a trial and error until you find the earth fault. So first, we're going to remove the external bell or external strobe. Let's check. Earth fault still exists. So that's not the source of the air fault. Air fault. And then plug it in. What are the other possibilities? Let's look on the loop card. We got loop one and loop two. Let's plug out loop one. And check if the earth fault still exists. Earth fault still there. All right. So that's not the source or the origin of the earth fault. Let's plug that thing back. Let's plug out fault loop number two. Let's see what's happening. Earth fault is gone. So that where the earth fault is coming from. Let's plug back loop number two. And then check if the earth fault returns. Yes, it does. So we are now concentrating on loop number two. Let's go around and have a quick look if there is no other such uh, visible problem, like a faulty detector that is wet. And then we're going to do something else in one of the junction boxes. This is where we're working right now. We are in one of the junction boxes. There you go. Luckily, it's just below the mimic panel. So we can check the earth fault. So we don't need to go to the main pile panel. Let's sort it out. Good thing that we label the cables and it's very helpful. So we know what's going on with these cables. So we're going to try to sort out by removing some cables one at a time until we justify where the earth fault is coming from. So that means we try to do trial and error. As you can see, loop two started here. So this is the cable loop to in coming from the fire panel and this is loop to out. So this is the two loops together and then what we're going to do is sort out one by one if it is coming from this box to the fire panel or from this box to the field and then it comes back to this box. So we're going to isolate first the loop coming from the fire panel, both loop in and loop out. What I have done is this is the loop out that's going to the fire panel, going back to the fire panel, and this is the start of the loop in the building. I mean, the end of the loop in the building that's connected to the loop out. So what I have noticed, the earth fault is gone. We have few detectors that is on fault right now. And all right, there are 25 detectors, but there is no earth fault. That means it's coming from this end. I'm going to connect this loop out to loop in and let's see if the earth fault returns. I just want to clear that loop in and loop out from the power panel is not the source of the earth fault. We're going to check the power for loop number two. So loop number two, that one, we have 16, 15 volts. That's a nice reading. The next one, we have 15, 16, 50, we had a nice reading. 
So from here, we have a very good reading. So let's go back to the Mimic or the junction box above the Mimic panel. Okay, so this is the loop in. Our power here in the Mimic panel is 15, 16 volts. That is a good reading. Let's move to the next one, which is the loop out. This cable. Let's see my reading. There goes my loop out. This cable going back to the pile panel and we had no reading at all. So this one is the one creating a short circuit or earth fault. Now this is the new loop for the new repurposed uh, area. Let's connect that and activate that to loop in. And let's see if we have, we can clear those faults. Those are, let's see. Okay. We have 25, we still have a loop open. That's normal because we disconnect that. So it fails. That means this new loop in, loop out of this new refurbished bill area is not really loop in, loop out. This is, this definitely, it, there's no continuity on it. There's a cut cable somewhere. So this one was connected to, this first pair was connected to a junctions. This is just like a terminal block, which is in, out, in, out, and then that it's a solid terminal block, somebody connected there. Whoever the installer of this, and the other one connect to the loop out. That means I need to sort out one by one. Where is that disconnection? I am wondering what is this new cable all about? And I tried to trace that. This loop in, loop out. Is seriously, it's only for this. Loop in, loop out. So it goes there, loop in, and then come back, loop out. And then after that, it goes to the, the field. This is the pile panel to the pile panel. It looks like what happened is the cable from there is actually connected to this somewhere. And that's the one we're going to find out. This is a ridiculous installation. What happened is I am supposedly the one doing the whole lot, but because my cost is a little bit higher, so they pick up somebody to do the job, which is at a lower cost, and this is what happened. I'm trying to sort out the problem. So this is it. One module, one cable. I'll disconnect this one, and look, it's moving, see? And this one is connected to that. So it's loop in, loop out. But this is a junction. See, that's a junction. That's not a box, sorry. That's a junction, a terminal. So they bring it here and here, and then that's it. So might as well just connect that because it's only one freaking module. All right, this one, totally useless. I'll chop it up and then pull the cable. Let's pull that cable, a useless cable. There you go, it's gone. <laughs> More investigation. Now before we, we remove detectors, modules, whatsoever, we tried to investigate in the pile panel what was existing and what is active right now and what is not active in loop two. Because we have a power here in the pile in the loop number two. Both of them have power. That means the power is still 15 volts, 16 volts fluctuating. That means it's good. So I just want to know which detector is active right now. And then that is our starting point to figure out how the cable was run. Based on the black plan, this area was renovated three to four months ago. That's gone. And these are all no detectors before, they're conventional. They are now addressable. This entire area from here, all the way here, they are all addressable. And this too remains conventional. This, we're trying to sort out which detector is active right now or module. Going to disconnect loop 
per loop. I mean, K connection of cables until we find out which one is Artem and which one is not. This is a long work. Another process of elimination begins. Remove the cables like this. Leave it hanging and then sort out. Hopefully, the earth fault remains so we can find it. Otherwise, we're going to start another day. Now we begin the connection. So temporarily I connected it like that. And then I had around nine volts. I zoom in, I got nine volts. What are those nine volts? Sorry about that. One, nine volts. I got missing detector. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven. And I got an open circuit fault. Got it? So let number 12. So my module is existing. So that means any of the problem is coming, the earth fault is coming from any of these nine detectors. After reconnecting that, this is what we have, an earth fault, a loop to open circuit, and an earth fault. Loop to open circuit, ignore that for a while because I know what have happened. It looks like they wire the cable not in a loop, but in one continuous circuit. If I find that detector with one wire only, I definitely I, that confirm my suspicion. Okay, let's go into this, egg, this uh, connect cable one by one until that air fault is gone. I wrote down the addresses of the detector so I can check one by one, disable them until we find the actual earth fault. So I have analyzed the problem. I have two detectors removed at present. So this detector number two, there's nothing wrong with it. Every time I connect that, I have an earth fault. Detector number three at the back of that and detector number five, which is this one. And what I have right now is two disconnected detector. Detector number one, which is there, and detector number 11, which is here. Every time I connect detector 11, I'm going to get an earth fault. So my problem is detector number 11, while going to detector number one, there, there's something wrong with that cable, so we need to replace that cable. But before I change any cables, I have to investigate first if I can fix the problem by going to the ceiling space and have a quick look between this detector to the other room on the other side. Okay, let's begin. This is detector one. Try to trace the cable, it's going here and that's going to the other side. Let's see what's in the other side. That okay, this cable here looks good to me. That's the one from the other room. It goes in here and it goes into the next room. Let's see what we have there. Okay, seems all right to me. The entry point is okay. Let's go to the next room. This is the cable that came from there outside. All right, so seems good to me. There's nothing wrong with it. And this is the detector 11. That once I connected the cable, it's providing me a short or uh, uh, an earth fault. My suspect, that thing. So the metal part is probably nick the cable. And that's as it travels through that. So that's uh, probably the only option we can do is replace that cable. Let us confirm. So this is the cable that's going to the next room. And those cables there are totally disconnected to the other detectors. Let's connect this one. Let's see. There you go. The air fault came up after we connect that cable. 
Now it's confirmed that cable detector 11 cable to the detector 1 cable which is one length need to be replaced. I cannot find obviously any physical damage. It looks like when it passed through a metal portion and it got nicked. That's where the problem is. Alright, so that's another day. We need to come back here just to replace that cable and then everything is good. Second day in the job. Okay, that's the problem. Let's zoom in. Up. Okay, you, you see this cable that passes through a steel frame? That's, the, that's our problem. This cable got nicked. Oh, I cannot pull it. It's just too, too tough. All right. So we're going to replace. We're going to this one or just get, we can pass it here that will be good and then we go to the next one all right one blank of cable from here to detector number uh, that's detector number one so that's the cable that we're going to replace the sour stick so we're going to replace this part okay that one that goes straight that's it and then that goes to, to the next room and that will solve our problem. Okay, I'm going to pull the ke that yellow stick with the cable in it. And then I cut it here and then join it here. Okay. This is your cable that have a earth fault. So we replace that. This is our new cable. Another suggestion, your cable tie. Avoid too tight cable tie because it might damage your cables. Just a little bit loose, should be a little bit loose. That's too much. All right, let's move to the next wall. This is the other side of the wall. That is our new cable. It's the old one. Okay, again, see it? It got nicked there somewhere. When I pull this cable, can't pull it. When I pull that cable, the earth fault was gone. All right, so that's our new one. And let's connect everything and I believe everything will be fine. Okay, so we were able to solve the earth fault. All is clear. Our final job, put a new fire detection block plan to replace the old one. All right, I hope you learned something today. This is Elmer, your fire protection guy. See you next time.